What is going on everybody? Welcome back to LYH Tutorials. Today we're going to be taking a look at five different commands that you might have not known about in Rhino 6 that are super super useful. Let's uh, crack straight into it. Alright, so our first one is going to be the set point command. Uh, now set point command is really really useful if you want to level something off in the x, y, or z axes. And to demonstrate, we're just going to draw some circles, some nice little bubbles here. Maybe one more. Oh, it's too big. Awesome. And we're going to make these different level. So maybe one is super up top. And it kind of decreases in level every single one. Nice. And we want to kind of flatten these up one more time. Say you know something's floating, you know something's floating in the air and you want to uh, make it back into, like drive it back into the floor or anything like that, you want to change the level. All we have to do is click this, select these, uh, type in set point. In this case we want everything to be uh, flat on the Z plane, so we're going to select Z. And as you can see, everything is flat and on the same plane. Now we can select it to be at its highest point or at its lowest point, it's really up to you. Awesome. Now, uh, for the X and Y, basically it does the same thing except on a different axis. So if we turn these sideways, like this, do, 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 do. and then we are going to do the set point command one more time. Ooh, let's see if it's X or Y. Take a gamble, maybe it's Y. Oh, it's X, okay. So again, if we set it on the X axis, um, then everything will be aligned on the X axis. Same thing on the Y, but we do have to kind of turn these around like that in order to for that to work. But again, super, super useful if you want to align one thing to another and, and have them on the same level and three different axes. All right, for the next command we're gonna go over, this is number two. It's going to be the select last command. Uh, now I've gone over this in my videos before, but this is super, super simple. If you just have a lot of different things that you want to select uh, because you just executed command, uh, so you have to go back and select one by one. You can do everything at once. Uh, to demonstrate this, we're gonna use just this simple form that I made, and I'm going to contour this. And we're gonna make a nice looking contour from here. Okay, now if we want to select all of these points or all of these curves here and make uh, make them maybe two or three centimeters thick, I'm not gonna go back and just select every single one of these. Now, there's many ways around this, uh, but what I like to use to speed up my workflow is the select last command. And if we just type that in, it's gonna select everything here for us and we can extrude everything down. Uh, Again, if we use select last command, it's going to select all of our extrusions, and then we can we can offset these surfaces, we can trim these surfaces, whatever we want to do with these. But yeah, that is our select last command. Super super useful. Okay, the third command we're going to go over is our dupe edge and a dupe border command. Now, this one is a super useful if you already made a surface or a poly surface, and you want to extract lines out of it. Now the dupe border command only works on uh, these surfaces. It will not work on anything that has a thickness to it. So if I demonstrate by offsetting this curve or the surface here, and I use the dupe border command, it will not work. But if I use this on the surface, then it will make this nice two borders for us. So this line here and this line here. I'm going to undo that. We can also use the dupe edge command. Now this will make a line from any edge on your model. Say I just want maybe this little part right here. Well actually that one is all close, but if I do the outside one, if I just want that line or this side here, or this side here, or this segment here, then I can do that. Uh, or if I just want to offset the middle and make a separate one, I can do that by using offset, changing the distance to a little bit lower and say I want I don't know another surface here then I can make that and we can extract these curves from our uh, extract or sorry dupe edge and dupe border commands 
Now another useful one is the extract isocurve command. I know this is like a three jammed in one, but hey, it's pretty useful. So if we type in extract isocurve, uh, it'll allow us to extract these lines down the middle here. So anything that uh, basically cuts through the surface here, we can extract in the U and in the V direction. So we're gonna select this, and here you can already see a nice preview of what you're gonna get. So this is in the U direction, we can change direction here, and it will start to have it in the V direction if we select the V. And there you go, there's our line. Okay, so that is dupe edge, dupe border, as well as extract isocurve. All right, the next command we're gonna go over is our tween curve command. Now, I find this one super useful when I'm doing stairs, especially stylized stairs that look really, really cool. Um, so I have these two curves here that I just drew. Now I want maybe eight stairs in between them to go up elevation of three meters. So let's just pretend that this is three meters here and I want eight different stairs in between these guys. <laughs> tween. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so if I do tween curve here, it'll give us a nice preview of what it'll look like. And as you can see, it's got evenly spaced elevation gain as well as uh, it'll make gradual steps to make this curve turn into this curve over here. So maybe this is a, a step coming out of a plaza onto the street or anything like that. Tween curve is the command that you want to use. Now to make this into our stairs, we can use our select last command, which we just learned, and then extrude this all the way down to here. And then we want to get the bottom of the surface here, so we can use our dupe edge command. This is all stuff that we just learned, already coming in handy, and then we can loft each one of these to make our surface. There you go. So this tween curve command is super, super useful, especially when we're making stairs. Okay, and the last command we're gonna cover for this episode is our, uh, well, not one command, but two commands, is our create UV curve and flow along surface. Now, this is super useful if you're into pottery or jewelry or anything uh, like that, where it requires a pattern on a certain surface. So I'm just gonna make something really quickly, go over to the front view, and I'm gonna make a nice curve like that. And then we're gonna have a center point for where this will revolve. And we're just gonna use a revolve. I can't spell revolve, revolve. This is the curve that we want. And this is the start axis and the end. I'm gonna do zero to 360 degrees. Okay, this is our nice vase here, or pot, whatever you guys want to call it. And we can use the create UV curve to kind of flatten this out so we can put a pattern or anything like that on top. So the command here is create UV curve, CRV. And I have this selected, so we're gonna press space or enter here. And it's gonna give us this nice unfolded version of this, kind of. And then we can put whatever we want on top of this surface. Uh, so let's say we do, oh, we just do like a curvature pattern. Like that, it also ends right here. There we go. And then uh, let's say we pipe this. So we make this thicker than it actually is. One is too small, we'll make it uh, three. Okay. And we want to put this back onto our face or decoration of some sort. Then we can use the flow along surface command. Well, we do have to make this into a surface. Okay, so uh, we'll use the flow along SRF for surface. And it's gonna ask for an object to flow along. That is our pattern that we made. And we're gonna press enter. Well, actually, we don't need to press enter. No, we do need to press enter, sorry. And then it's gonna ask for a base surface. And it's gonna uh, ask us to select near an edge or a corner. So we're gonna select the corner 
and then it's going to select uh, tell us to ask uh, tell us to find our target surface and again it's going to ask us to select edge or near match corner so this is very important uh, if we want this to be on the bottom we're going to want to select the bottom here and we're going to let it load just for a little bit and boom there you have it our pattern is on top of our little vase here which is awesome all right so thank you everybody for making it to the end of the video and this is what everybody's been waiting for, our special hidden command. Now this command is, I'd say not very useful, but it is very cool, builds a lot of uh, momentum and it's got its own little ring to it. Uh, and this command is the turntable command. And all it really does is turn your model around and around and around. Now, I can see this being useful in presentations where you have a model just spinning around and around. But other than that, it's a, it's a nice, fun little tool. You can obviously change the speed at which it turns. Supersonic, uh, very slow. But yeah, I can see this uh, being at a presentation and then you just kind of spin it very slowly for the client or, or professor to kind of have an idea of what your design is. But yeah, thank you everybody for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, please leave a like and do subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video.